reason we are where we are is because we have not taken research seriously as a country. You know, all of the developments that you see all over the world, the countries that you call developed countries, have developed because of research, because of improvements in technological know-how and etc. etc. And all of those have up arisen as a result of research. So in other words, research is what has underpinned all of their development efforts. So if we too want to move forward, um, we need to take research very, very seriously. Um, already the African Union recognizes that and that is why the AU says that um, every African country should allocate at least 1% um, of its GDP um, towards research. So that, that answers it. Okay. Can we have a sense of the government's commitment towards improving either the lives of researchers so that they can better do their work or towards improving research in general so that we can have better research outputs to transform the economy? Yeah, um, currently as I speak with you, there is um, um, a memo in cabinet that we are discussing um, that aims to set up a national research fund. Okay, um, you remember that um, the past government um, had a running battle with UTAG, University Teachers Association, where it said it wanted to scrap the book and research allowance that was given to lecturers for research. That became a thorny issue in our country. And so we said that when we come to power, we will maintain the book and research allowance for lecturers. But in addition to that, set up a national research fund which will be responsible for funding cross-cutting research. Okay, when I talk about cross-cutting research, for example, if there is an outbreak of, say, Burili ulcer in Ghana, and then you need your scientists to come around and, and tackle Burili ulcer and do the research that will give you an antidote to Burili ulcer and so on. Those kinds of research, um, even research on, on, on sanitation, on all of the problems that are national in nature, those ones ought to be funded by a national research fund. And many serious countries across the world have a national research fund, but we don't have it. You know, it's only the individual um, researches that are conducted by lecturers and people in research institutions, and that is not enough to feed into a national research agenda. So to underline our seriousness about research as a basis for development, very soon government will announce um, um, this national research fund that will make available money you know, for cross-cutting research. Honorable, okay. how soon should we expect this? And then how much money should we be looking at? Well, as I said, it, it's a matter that is in cabinet now that we are talking about. So which tells you that pretty soon um, it will be outdoored and I'm sure uh, the relevant ministers, uh, which will be the Minister for Education and then the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, will be the ones who will formally announce to the Ghanaian people. And that would also um, come with how much money is involved and the parameters for executing the fund and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I'll ask my final question. Uh, during the conference, you made the promise to the Kali Ghana, which is the consortium of academic and research libraries, that you'll be their spokesperson. What exactly should we expect going forward? Or how exactly are you going to really push their agenda forward so that it becomes prime on the table wherever we find ourselves or in every discussion? Well, as much as they themselves want to push their agenda, you know, an advocate can only do so much, but the bulk of the effort ought to be by the practitioners themselves, the people who are in the industry. So to the extent that they themselves are willing to come up with innovative ideas on how we will improve the library environment in our country and make the library system um, a mainstream part of national development efforts, once I sit around the cabinet table, um, I, as I said, I will promise to always speak um, their interests and their concerns. Um, of course, I know that the, min the Minister for Science and Innovation and also the Minister of Education are also passionate uh, about l research and so on. And so you can be sure that I won't be alone. I will have allies um, in the government who will help us to push, push the library agenda. But they themselves have to show a lot of innovation. And in my speech, um, I suggested ways by which we can introduce um, innovations that would allow the library to be more prominent in, in, in the national system.
any final words or advice for librarians or for libraries to really move libraries forward and make well, it more? My advice to libraries and, and librarians is um, for them to make the library environment very conducive and serene that allows people to feel comfortable in there and to be able to come and do their research. That's number one. Number two, I also said that it is important that they find a way to let the world know the store of knowledge that they hold. You see, because if people don't know what is there, they won't even come there in the first place. So they should find a way, the way that we as academics are always told that we should take our gown to town. They should also bring the library to town, <laughs> you know, and allow people to be able to interact with the library system and know what is there. So um, what has Kalig really been doing all these years in terms of trying to build capacities for the librarians and um, all those who find themselves in the library profession? Uh, well, Kalig was set up primarily to provide access to academic and scholarly resources uh, for tertiary institutions and research centers in Ghana. Uh, we recognize that um, with the advent of the internet, uh, most people erroneously think that they can just go on the internet and find popular resources. But there is a difference between popular resources and academic curated scholarly resources. Uh, and we also realize that it is a challenge for most individual institutions to go directly and buy a database uh, from a provider. It is too expensive. So what Kalik has succeeded in doing is to form this consortium, bring all of us together under the same umbrella with the view to negotiating these publishers and then providing access to these scholarly resources at an affordable rate for academic institutions in Ghana. So that is what we have been devoted to doing. Calic brings together both the public universities as well as uh, emerging private universities because we recognize that they also have a role to play uh, in the socioeconomic development of the country. And through this platform, we have been able to provide access to resources which otherwise we wouldn't have at, had access to to support the core mandate of our institutions, which is teaching, learning, and research. Okay. So with all these achievements, what is the way forward? What is the next big thing that Kalik is looking at achieving or what do you really plan to do? Well, we recognize as a consortium that traditionally our focus has been on supporting teaching and learning to the neglect of research. But increasingly, evidence shows that um, research-intensive universities contribute very much to the development of the country. So what, as a, what we as an organization have taken it upon ourselves to actually look at how we can support research activities, which is why the focus of this conference is on uh, research. And and particularly, we recognize, for example, that there are many research activities going on in within our institutions. At the end of the research projects, the data underpinning these pieces of research is totally lost. But this is gold mine. This is gold mine that development policy makers actually need. And therefore, this conference is focused on how we can preserve, curate, and provide access to these resources, uh, research uh, uh, data sets, so that other people can reuse it. But it's also built on the philosophy of openness. Uh, openness has become a defining uh, a philosophy of current global thinking. And we believe that by providing access to this openly, it has a role, role to play in the development of, of, of our continent and also of Ghana. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to pick on your last statement, which has been on openness, I want to understand uh, Kalik's perception or Kalik's stand relating to open access. Has Kalik signed that open access thing where all institutions are signing on to? Has Kalik signed on to it? Or do you encourage your members to sign on to open access? Well, um, as a consortium, we come from individual universities, and you recognize that the individual universities have uh, policies oriented towards openness. So as an example, in my university, KNUST, we have a, an institutional repository, and that institutional repository is freely available to everyone. Every single article published in my university by any of the researchers and the, uh, uh, what do you call the professors, is freely available through our institutional repository. You don't have to pay for it. You can go now after this interview and then go onto our uh, uh, institutional repository site and you would find all the articles. So in so doing, we make knowledge accessible and available to everyone at no cost. And that has been part of how we promote the openness agenda and we support it towards national development. Mm -hmm. 
if colleagues should make one call on government to support or to do something, what will that be? What we would say is that uh, government should pay attention to the role libraries can play in national development. There is an erroneous impression that libraries are antiquated, they are old-fashioned, they are Dickensian. We think that as repositories of knowledge, there is a role that we can play and it is important that government supports this agenda and promotes it so that we can play our role in the national development activities of this country.